Hey, let's bring in Lars Everson. Oh, yes, mission of the weekend. He's sitting in a Renault Espace that he's got from Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Welcome, Lars. Yeah, I had to go into this one because the, the Nissan Cube just didn't suit my style. I mean, I tried yeah. it for a while, but we're now yeah. into the Renault Espace. Uh, it's true, but it's worth, of, saying uh, for me. That it's worth saying that you had a great option. You get a great variety yeah. of cars you could choose from from Enterprise. And when you asked to trade in your Nissan Cube for uh, uh, whatever the other one was, they were very welcome. They were very accommodating. It was a very slick uh, maneuver to do, wasn't it? Very yeah, and I, I guess for them, just getting a Nissan Cube in, in is good because you don't see too many of them. Yeah. And sometimes no, people no. want it. I think so, they stopped you know, making the Nissan I, I, Cube in about 2009 as well. So I'm amazed yeah, there's no. people them on the fleet at enterprise but you know they've got yeah, everything. the kind of the kind of car rental agency we're dealing with there total pro yeah, exactly um anyway what is the biggest mission then in the footballing terms today do you reckon Lars? so i guess we, we always have this discussion like the temptation is to say whoever's playing man city but let's just I, i'm looking at the games today i'm kind of thinking I'm, i might go for luton here uh, not okay. because playing Brentford at home is necessarily the hardest thing uh, in the world, but just because it's such a key game for them. If you leave the higher table, they're they're one point away from safety. Which I think if you'd have told uh, Rob Edwards, if you told Luton that uh, ahead of the season that after 33 games they'd be one point away from safety, I'm, I'm pretty sure they would have taken that. Uh, they, they've been wonderfully competitive, but they they're now having they've been dealt such a rough hand, or having already a, a small squad, a small budget, all of this. They have this dreadful injury crisis now that they have to deal with, and we've been seeing them um, basically run out of centre halves. I mean, for a team that plays three at the back. I think they only have really one fit player who's a, who's an experienced center half in in Reece Burke. Whereas if he's had he's had to draft in Robert, have to draft in various fullbacks and, and wingbacks to to play as center halves to try to try to make that work. But if you look at their fixture list, I mean, Banford at home is one of the not too many remaining fixtures where you think they've got a pretty decent chance of getting a result. Uh, and uh, given where they are in the table, absolutely crucial. So for me, Luton biggest defenderless Luton biggest mm. mission of the day yeah. the table. It's possible that Lukonga and Adebayo might be back, big. which makes such a... Lukonga was really brilliant. I mean, they both were actually really key for them. And like, it's such a big weekend at the bottom, isn't it? Because on Sunday, you know, we have the sort of PSR appeals derby between Everton <laughs> and Nottingham Forest, where at any point during the game over the Tanner, they just announced that Everton have won their appeal or Nottingham Forest have lost their appeal. But, in, you know, that is that game is enormous as well, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, the points deduction derby, uh, absolutely massive. I, I wonder if this is one of those where... Everton, man. They, Everton, earlier in the season, I kept coming on here and saying, actually, you know what? Everton are playing better than their results would suggest. And and, and then the, the, the results just never came. And that, But never, lately, I'm not sure that's even true. Like, they've, they've started... Not even I can defend what happened against Chelsea, for instance. Uh, they've, not, they've not been great recently. I think that the, the thing I like... From, from Everton's perspective, they are quite good from set pieces, Everton. And Nottingham mm -hmm. Forest haven't been great at defending them no, this season. True. So if you're an Everton fan, that's what you're really looking at here. Uh, maybe that's where you can get some goals. Um, you're talking, talking about the relegation battle. I mean, you've got Sheffield United Burnley again today, which, well, again, I say that as if that fixture happens all the time. It, it feels kinda, like it, it does, doesn't, doesn't it? Yeah. It, well, yeah. Every three weeks. And, and, that, and I, I was just thinking of this. Obviously, for Sheffield United, it's looking very, very difficult. You know, 16 points. Uh, they've got 10 points to make up to Nottingham Forest. Mm. They've only won three games all season. That That's probably not happening. Burnley also probably do, but it must be so frustrating for Burnley because if you look at their last two fixtures, they would have had four more points if not for just egregious, egregious defensive errors, right? I mean, they were certainly... Um, and yeah, they would have gotten a draw against Everton, and then they would have gotten a win against Burnley if uh, if not for egregious goalkeeping mistakes. That those four points would have taken, uh, would have would have taken Burnley to twenty four, which would have put them within. Like for everything that's gone wrong this season, yeah. they would have been in with a shout, especially if they beat Sheffield United. I mean that the game today could have been a game to lift them out of uh, you know out of, potentially out of the relegation zone, but. But but there obviously that's not what's happened. So they're very frustrating for for Vincent Company with all the individual mistakes they've suffered. It feels like this season is just he, he's lo looking very sad whenever I see him now. Vincent Company. I hope he has a nice holiday or something after this. It's been a tough year for him. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, Arsenal after a really dreadful week for them, thrashed by Villa last Sunday, and then knocked out of the Champions League by Eric Dyer on, on Wednesday. They, I'm trying to wind them. I'm trying to wind them up, Max. Um, okay. uh, and. <laughs> And then knocked out by Eric Dyer on, on Wednesday. Really dreadful. This is a this is a horrible match. Gary O'Neill's well drilled Wolves 
to go away there to try and get your season back on track. You don't want to do it, do you, Lars? No, I, I, I concur, Charlie. Uh, it, I, I really didn't see last weekend coming for Arsenal. It was quite fresh as strong, but there was something about that second half. You know, because they played so well in the first half, Arsenal. You didn't get the goal. And in the second half, you're thinking, you know, a pivotal moment in their season. And you're just expecting them to, to lift. And, and they just faded away. And I, I do wonder if they're tired. I mean, I looked at this this week. It's a slightly arbitrary thing. But I, I looked at the Arsenal squad and how many minutes the players have played in yeah. all competitions. And they've got they've got six players who have played more than 3,400 3, minutes in all competitions. 3,400. Arsenal have got six players over that threshold. Man City have got just three. And Liverpool have just got just one. Now, again, 3,400 minutes is a very arbitrary threshold for me to pick, yeah. but it kind of seems to illustrate that the, the, Arteta has a core group of players he's really relied on heavily this this season mm. and maybe hasn't rotated as much as some of the real Wolves, as we will remember, beat Man City at home. They beat Tottenham at home. They got a draw against Villa at home. They got a draw against Newcastle. They beat Chelsea. Gary O'Neill seems to like these games against big teams at home. The big problem for them is that they got a bunch of injuries. And Cunha being injured again is such a blow for them. We saw how he livened up their attack. He's set to miss out. I'm pretty sure Gary O'Neill said he only has 10 fit senior outfield players. Uh, so I guess that should... Make the team selection easy, ideally, if he has people in all positions, I guess. But mm. that is the big up thing, upside for Arsenal here. Wolves have got a lot of injuries. 37.77777 games. That is 3,000. Because when you did that number of minutes, I was like, that's okay. just a lot of minutes. I've yeah, got no yeah, concept yeah. of what that means in, yeah. in football of minutes. And so I did them. I did a division for everybody. Okay. Uh, so about thirty-eight games. It's quite a lot of games. It's a lot of games. It's it a lot of games. But it is um, their job. So you know. Yeah, it's true. Uh, um, apart from Leandro Trossard, who's an accountant, and no one, no one, te- no one mentions it. He works. <laughs> He's he works time, a seventy-hour. He? He, he works for Deloitte. He works for Deloitte. Oh, he does a seventy-hour right. week and just turns up and plays and never gets the credit he deserves. No. Should we talk about the um, FA Cup semi-final, Lars? Man City, Chelsea. Everyone's prob- saying we- it, this, it's it's all about Cole Palmer. Yeah, the Cole, uh, the Cole, the Cole Palmer Classico. Can we call it that? I mean, we we we're yeah, taken to doing that on the show, haven't we? Every week, there's just something, uh, something classico. I mean, the really, Palmerica. Sheffield, you, she, yeah, she, <laughs> the Palmerico. Sheffield United, Burnley. At the end of the day, the Sandalberg yeah, Classico, of course, from a Norwegian course perspective. But yeah, no, the the FA Cup semi final probably more important. Um, most people, I guess given the tr- tr- trouble that Chelsea have had this season, we'll be tempted to maybe write them off here a little bit. But 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 Chelsea, they have kind of held their own in, in games uh, against the bigger teams. It's, a, it's been a strange thing uh, uh, about Chelsea this season. Very frustrating team, obviously. But, but, but against, the, the, they've got, apologies, they've got a draw home and away against Manchester City. They got a draw at home against Arsenal. They got a draw at home against Liverpool. Uh, lost 4-1 away to Liverpool. But in the league, they've shown against the top three that they've been competitive in those games. And with Cole Palmer just on tremendous form and Man City maybe a little bit shaken emotionally after being knocked out of the Champions League. No, no, no. I, I think this is not a foregone conclusion at all. Uh, and it yeah, should be a fun I think game. You're right. I think. Yeah, I agree. And I think also... If you look at City's fix, it's of one of the it's one of the bananas. There aren't many banana skins mm. on their journey to the double now, but uh, yeah, you never mm. know. I can't react to that. What was incredibly tense game, wasn't it? Against but in the week. Uh, anyway, that'll do, Lars. Cheers, pal. Brilliant. Anytime. Thanks, Lars. Love- on AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app, and on your smart speaker. Talksport.